On this week's episode, me and my alter egos look for steel. And I also look at a foot. <laughs> and action! Are we good to go? Yeah. Oh. And action! <laughs> What's up guys? So earlier today I had started colouring this amazing piece by Robert James Workshop. This is the Mad Hatter, as you probably all guessed from the Mad Hatter's Tea Party, Alice in Wonderland. So earlier today he just started off as a raw uh, bronze resin. Yesterday I had put these uh, 10 mil threads in his legs all the way up to his knee fiberglass that all in so it's properly secure and made it come out at a 90 degree uh, square so it's 90 degrees to the base so what he's done what he's done talking in the third person now what i've done is i've just bolted it to this workhorse so it can stand up they've come out nice and square just to see if it would stand flat and as you can see it does stand flat to my amazement so uh we've got the copper pipe coming out that runs through the whole body down this arm actually would you believe it down through this handle into the actual teapot and then the spout so the water comes out into the into the cup and then it trickles down into the actual urn itself in the last episode or one of the last episodes you've seen this massive urn that we had cast the customers have taken that away they're just fitting the stainless steel frame that the this guy stands on and the mad march hair but on today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be attaching the Mad March hair to a top hat. So we've cast another top hat. We've flipped it upside down and we've also cast the Mad March hair. He's going on top of that top hat. And these two are gonna be having a great little tea party together once they're both finished. And um, it's just gonna look great. So today, let's get to it. Right gang, this is the Mad March hair. You've probably seen him in other videos such as the one before this one or maybe the one before that. <laughs> the job now, and I'll show you, we cast this hat. This hat is what's on top of the Mad Hatter. But we've cast the second one and then we've put this one upside down. See, this little beauty goes on top. But this copper pipe needs to go underside, under the hat. So I've drilled a hole in the bottom of that hat. Oh shit. Pug. <laughs> that was a that was a mess. Are you okay? He's all right. He's solid. Solid as a rock. Well, we won't be doing that again. So it goes in here. Let me just see. There's a little hole there. I can try and pop that in there, just so you get an idea of how he's going to sit. <clears throat> so he sits on here, but. I all hear you asking yourself, how's he gonna, how's he gonna attach it to this? Well, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put some 10 mil threaded bar in his heel and I'm gonna drill it up into his underfoot there as well. And both bars are gonna just lay flat against the inside of the hat and then I'm gonna fiberglass over that so that you won't see it. They're actually going to fill this with plants, so it's going to have a lot of plants and shrubbery and things. Inside this urn, it's all going to be planted with a lot of flowers, so it's all going to look very nice and organic. Um, and these two are going to look absolutely stunning once they are finished. Now, if you just look inside this cup, I mean, it's, it was a massive mission, but we managed to put the copper pipe feeding through his wrist into this cup so that when the water comes out, it trickles down into the urn and again gets recycled and reused. Um, but our mission today is to pop this Mad March hair onto the hat and we can get it ready for colouring tomorrow so we can look just as glamorous as the Mad Hatter. I am going to put this on because resin dust just is not cool. Um, if, ever, ever, if you're ever drilling resin, always be sure 
to wear one of these. But anyway, now we've worked out where, so we've worked out where he's gonna sit. So we're gonna drill uh, a hole in his heel there and in his heel here. So that's, okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna lay him down and then what we'll do is we're going in here and in here. As you can see, his feet are actually part filled. And then what I'll do once we've drilled the holes, I'll fix the, um, the thread into the heels and then we'll go over it with bronze resin uh, just to blend it all in and then we'll attach it to the hat. Now I've drilled all the holes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab myself some stainless steel threaded bar. It has to be stainless, it can't be any ferrous metals, it can't be mild steel or threaded bar. Because over time, mild steel just rusts and rust comes decay and after it decays, well, you, again, gotta do it all over again. So marine grade stainless steel threaded bar, if ever dealing with outdoor sculpture, even if you wrap uh, mild steel in fiberglass, Steel and fiberglass inside heat and cool at different temperatures. So even still, it creates a moisture inside that fiberglass, which then makes the steel go rusty. So the thing to do is pay a little bit more and use stainless steel. So now I managed to find what I was looking for. Um, the aim of the game now is to put this into this and then this onto this. Now, in order to do that, we need to work out how much of this we need to put in this. So the way to do that is I'm gonna measure the distance between the bottom of the steel and where my finger is roughly, okay? So that, the top of the hat's gonna be about there okay and then inside of this foot it goes in a good inch and a half i'd say so then you add i mean this is very scientific but you can roughly add that onto the end of this measurement up here so you're going to roughly need about yay much for and then what we'll do is we'll resin this end into this leg whilst it's balancing on that hat it's a huge circus act, but I think we can manage. I think we can do it. So, that being said, I'm gonna take this angle grinder, put on some goggles, and cut this bit of thread so we can do what we said we're gonna do. My fucking toes don't work! I think. God, I gotta turn some electricity on. All the way over yonder <clears throat> just going to the uh b-wing darling right now that's on we're gonna go outside and get a grand in follow me jordan <laughs> a tricky one because I need to work out where that copper pipe is. So it looks like he's going up the shin rather than up his calf or Achilles heel. So I think I can afford to go downwards like this as opposed to in because I really don't want to put a hole in this. that hole deep enough. A bit of a tricky one this. So it tells me that this thread is a dashing too long. Let's just make them a lot shorter. Really? So 
I've done is I've just cut a, a notch out of this thread because the angle of the hat actually does this. So with a straight thread going into the back of his heel, well, it kind of just sits on the edge of the hat like this and it doesn't sit flush to the inside of the hat. I said hat quite a few times then, bear with me. So I'm gonna weld in this little notch here to make this super strong. And then I'm gonna resin both these uh, threads into the feet. And then I'm gonna fiberglass this section of the rod on the inside of the hat so then everything's super strong. And then I'm gonna put a load of resin underneath his feet and the brim of the hat so that it's sandwiched between those two points and it's fiberglassed on the inside as well. So the whole thing is one solid piece because the last thing we want is for it to fall to bits. And um, quite, whew, quite frankly, we want it to work. That fat pigeon, that fat old pigeon. So gang, what we've got here is my MIG, no, it's not a MIG welder, I lied to you, it's a TIG welder. Um, we actually got a two meter torch because my nine meter is in the shop getting repaired. But this one actually has a really nifty uh, hand control because you've got your foot control down here, okay? Which is also the way it can be operated. Which again, if you've got um, your MIG rods, TIG rods, so if you've got your TIG rod and then your torch at the same time, with MIG it's literally one torch and it's wire fed whereas this one has a tungsten and it's gas. Obviously there's, there's gas in MIG, but the gas flows through um, and basically encapsulates the feeds, the, uh, the arc if you like, and then you feed your rod in. So you end up just creating your weld pool and then feeding a rod into wherever you need to fill the void. So we're gonna fill these two voids here. Oh, bear with me, Jordan. Uh, oh. I'm gonna fill in these two voids here, but I'm gonna heat them up with the, with the welder and then I'm gonna feed in my rod, okay? We're on the hunt for Ziggy the Rascal. He's currently in the field devouring a bone. So, uh, should we go say hello to him? There he is, there he is, look. Come on then, come on then. No, honestly, he is my dog. <laughs> he just doesn't like people going up to him when he's, when he's eating, I guess. Come on then, hey, come on then. Come here then, come here then. <laughs> that's my boy, that's my boy. Come on then. Look how proud he is, he's just trotting along. Come on. What's this? What's this? Eh? Yeah! <laughs> Did you see how cack handed that throw was? Good boy! Good boy! Yush! <laughs> no, I didn't throw that one. No, he'll devour that. He'll devour that. He'll be, he'll be chewing on that for days. And he's such a handsome boy, though. You're such a handsome boy! You're such a handsome boy! Ziggy! It's your daddy! Come on then! Not even the steel clacking works. Alright, we'll leave you to it. Have fun in your copious amounts of land. The one thing that is good about him being here He's got all of this space to run around, right? And that is obviously completely fenced off. Everywhere is completely fenced off. He can't get out. But he likes chasing the big lorries, which isn't actually a good thing. But as long as he's on this side of the fence, he runs up and down this field like you wouldn't believe. So um, he gets so much exercise in, which is great because he's a New Zealand sheep herding dog and needs his exercise daily, daily. But there is a massive woodland behind here, which we take him up most days. And he has such a great time, don't you, my boy? Eh? Nope, okay, he's not interested. Now we've welded these little notches in, I'm just gonna grind it back, make it nice and neat. Um, and then I'm gonna mix up some resin. I'm just gonna pop these inside of these holes. And then I'm gonna line the threads with resin anyway. And then I'm gonna stick them to the side of the hat 
on the inside of the hat and then we just got to hold it and wait for it to go off. Once that's roughly gone off, we'll then fiberglass it. So then it's nice and strong. We're gonna mix up this sort of resin putty. It's like a body filler, so strong. Resin based, it's a two part, you add your catalyst, you mix that in, that really tacks everything in place. And then the real strength comes in when you add fiberglass mesh with pure general purpose resin. The two together, it's super strong. You can't even bash it with a hammer. Well, you can bash it with a hammer, but um, it doesn't really do a lot. So little nifty <coughs> tricks. If you, if you use silicon rubber, right, um, and you have some left over and you've got nowhere to put it, just let it go off because it makes these brilliant pads for mixing resin up, small amounts of resin up, um, because, you know, nothing sticks to rubber other than the sculpture and your clothes. So resin, I mean, this is a bit of a old, tub of rubber that we we overweighed because we thought we needed more and it gone off so all we're gonna do is use it as a little mixing um, pad which is great saves you using lids or the table or your hand I don't know however many people use their hand but um, I wouldn't recommend it so this here is a body filler lovely putty stuff it's great stuff super strong once added with its sort of binder, uh, normal ratios, they obviously give you one of these to one of these. So basically, it's almost like pea size to every sort of scoop, if you like. You add a, a sort of a pea size amount. I'm not going to do it just yet because I want to mark everything out. But because this doesn't take long to go off, you've literally got about 10 minutes. OK, and the more you more of this stuff you put in, the faster it goes off. But the more of this you put in, the less you'll have for the amount that's already left in the bucket. So it's good to use the right proportions. Strongly recommend. So I don't think we'll need much more than that to begin with, just to tack it in place. This isn't gonna what this isn't what we're gonna use to hold everything together because this on its own is strong but can be quite fragile if you were to pull it or knock it. Like I said before, the real strength comes in when we add the fiberglass to the normal resin. But this stuff is great for supporting in place. So, hat, hair, attach. Zigman, you come for the party, hey? Eh? You come for the party, hey? Eh? You come for the party, my man. Oh, now you want cuddles, huh? Now you want cuddles. Go on, be free. Good boy. Be free. See how I did that? Magic. So, let's grind these down. He's on there. Um, don't want him falling over. Let's just pop this on like so. Just to line it up again, this copper pipe is up against the inside of the hat. That foot's touching. This thread now sits in here. You see how that slots in there? I've made the kink, I've welded. Now it fits to the side of that hat. Okay, so that is gonna be all tacked in place with the resin that we've put on the pad. Now with this one, it's a little bit more tricky because his foot is more on the rim than it is on the uh, on, in overlapping into the uh, into the abyss of the inside of the hat. Marked it all out. Everything's cut. I'm just going to add this little bit of catalyst to the resin. Mix in. This stuff's brilliant. I mean, it's so versatile. You can use it for anything. You can use it for fixing small pieces. Um, filling little discrepancies that you might have. For example, if you end up with any air bubbles, um, which is inevitable with laminating sculpture, you always end up with air bubbles. If you don't degas your resin, if you don't roll out the resin or roll out the air bubbles or the resin to the edges of your mold and allow that air to travel out so that you don't have as much air in the resin. I mean, it's, it's so difficult to try and keep 
the air bubbles out. So if you do have any, this is where I just like put a hole in it. <laughs> nah, but if you do have any, then go over it with a wire brush. Smack the living daylight out of it once you've cast it. Or what I've recently learned is a very light powder in a portable sandblaster. Sandblast the whole lot, not to take away any of the texture, but just enough pressure to find any of those discrepancies or holes. That's where this stuff comes in. You have this lovely body filler resin, which you can literally put a resin pigment in here. So a brown resin pigment and fill those holes. And then over the top, you can then use your bronze powder and your capsules and your calcium carbonates. And you mix that up to a really nice putty clay like consistency. And then you can go over and put your tool marks in and replicate those textures that were already there and then you can go over with a little bit of acetone to soften that resin off so it blends in with the rest of the sculpture and then once you've put a color over it, it disappears completo finito anyway back to what we're doing um so i'm gonna just put resin all in that thread all up in this thread yeah and then that basically keys in to the resin quickly quickly shifty mover this stuff, like I say, doesn't take long to go off. So we're just gonna fill this cavity with this beautiful resin. Beautiful. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that to one side. Gotta move fast. This goes back in. That's Leaning right over, beautiful. That one goes in there. Just gonna try and get that little bit of resin on the side of the hat like that. This is just to hold it all into place, remember guys. Don't trust this to be your final fixing. This is just so we can get it all fixed into place. And that, guys, I'm gonna let that just go off, let that tack, that's gonna take probably 10, 15 minutes. And once that's done, I'm just gonna go up the edges of that thread with more of this uh, resin, and then we'll go over it with a thicker resin um, with some fiberglass, so that all that disappears. You ain't gonna even see any of this. As long as there's copper pipe sticking out the bottom of the hat, once this gets bolted to the actual stainless steel uh, frame, this will then be attached to a pump or another piece of pipe which is attached to a pump and then that pump's going to be submerged in the water pumping that water through this sculpture out of the teacup back into the urn so let's get ready to put the fiberglass on so just going to give you a little bit of context before we actually zoom out and show you what we're about to embark on but the resin barrel turned up uh, yesterday and Lucas had put the tap on the new one but there was no one here to install it and he's gone. He's not in today and we need resin. So we've got the empty barrel here, but I mean, it's light, I can pick it up, but I'm gonna, any, it, it's self-explanatory, but you're gonna try and empty some resin into this tiny little bucket. I have a funny feeling Lucas has already done this. Whee, there she blows. <laughs> Ugh. Tell you what, this would be a good thumbnail. <laughs> and that. This can go outside now. <laughs> no, it's not. This, this way. Barrel. Forwards. This is like the modern, the old original, uh, what are they called? The things where you lean forward and. We'll see you now. <laughs> anyway, enough of the shenanigans. Uh, this is dried. 
we've uh, done our circus act. So this is all dried now. So, as you can see, he's, he's in there. He's strong, he's solid. Both threads are tacked to the side. I've got my gloves on because this stuff is super sticky. Um, now, in here is a mixture of general purpose resin, okay, and uh, a calcium carbonate and cabosil mix. And those two powders combined just make a super, super strong resin. And this stuff is going to act as a bed for our fiberglass to just sit on. Because if you just put fiberglass straight onto that, it just won't stick very well. It won't, it does, fiberglass doesn't like to bend round corners. It doesn't like folding. So you need to create a nice bed of resin, nice thick resin, for the fiberglass to be rolled on or stippled on to then basically mould round whatever it is that you're wanting it to stick to. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix in that catalyst nice and thoroughly and then we're going to apply it to our threads. I'm going to take one of Lucas's brushes which is kept in the acetone. We're just brushing this resin onto the threads and along the hat as well. So we've created a lovely bed there for our fiberglass to go on top and create oodles of strength. I've got myself a board here with a bit of cling film on it um, and this is just going to be, it's just going to act as a sort of a, a bed if you like, just to sort of brush our resin onto the fiberglass because you need to let the resin soak into the mesh so that the whole thing becomes malleable, it breaks down slightly and then uh, all the resin just, it just turns into mush and once you've popped it on it becomes so malleable that it just moulds to whatever but again it struggles to get round corners like if, if you try and pop it round a corner like this this edge just bubbles up and it doesn't actually sit flat so if you ever come up to a corner that you have to go around on both sides then uh, what you can do is come up oh, you just come up one side so then it, it creates a lip like this because it will hang over and then you bring the other side that creates a lip like this so you end up meeting the two uh, the two ends and these two are resin together this is resin to the surface this is resin to this surface instead of you having to fold it over like this you can just meet one side to another and then once if, as long as you've got a lovely body a bed of resin underneath all of that just meets and it creates a really tight fit so you never have to worry about fiberglassing around corners again so two bits of fiberglass we mix up the catalyst in with the resin and I'm just going to brush this has actually got a bit of bronze powder in it hence why it's brown but I'm just going to brush on like so and this just soaks in alright, let that soak in lovely jubbly make sure that you cover all white areas so it's all covered it's all nice and thick soaked in now, we're going to go in side of here and we're going on that bed of resin that we've just brushed on and then we're going to just stipple around the thread make sure everything's covered it makes the threads really strong and they're not going to come away and two, you're making it look neat and tidy because once this is all finished and the resin's covered so I am going to go over the whole thing and blend all this in with some resin, with some bronze powder and cabosil make it to a real nice clay like consistency and I'm just going to blend everything in so you can't see and I'm going to sand all this back, fettle it all back and then I'm um, just going to build it up so you won't be able to see any of this protruding rod. So the general rule of thumb when fiberglassing, because I know it can be an absolute mess, you can be as organised as you want, right? To start, you've got all your pots all in one area, got all your brushes all in one area, in your acetone, lovely jubbly, start off clean, as soon as you have one little hiccup or you feel a little bit frustrated, that all goes out the window. But the one thing you can do is 
keeping your hands clean, trying to keep all of this, and it's very difficult, it takes a lot of time. But what I try to live by is you've got your clean hand and your dirty hand. And so your clean hands always operate in the brush, and then your dirty hands always operate in the dirty stuff. But the brush acts as a tool. So as well as brushing it on, then you've got a big layer of fiberglass, say. You can pick it up with your dirty hand, and then the other part of the brush acts as your hand itself. Because the one thing is, if your hands are all covered with resin and fiberglass and you start touching the, the sculpture, because this is key, you end up covering it all in resin, you've only got to spend all hours and hours and hours at the other end, fettling it all back, making it neat and tidy. So the thing to do is to try and keep your hands nice and clean, yourself nice and clean. I mean, I don't look it at the minute, but just making sure that you just keep everything in order. This bloody hair is in my eyes! Um, anyway, so, dirty hand, clean hand, tool. So, as we go in, you can, you can sort of, and this, is, some people get a bit flustered, is just by applying the fiberglass to whatever area, but you can use the brush as a bit of a tool just to sort of eke it in, and then bring it up to the edge, push it down slightly with your dirty hand, and then just stipple in with a brush. Rather than trying to get all your hands in and, and moving it about, it just slowly, slowly catchy monkey. But with this method, if you can quite try and perfect this method, it makes your life a lot easier when trying to do quite a delicate casting job because you really don't want to end up having more work at the other end once you've covered your sculpture in resin. Right gang, so now we've applied the fiberglass and he's all on his hats, he's nice and secure. I'm going to let that fiberglass cure overnight, although it'll probably be done in about 45 minutes to an hour, enough to just sort of move it about a lot. But tomorrow we're going to come back, we're going to start the patina process beforehand. We're just going to fettle in his paw here, where he's holding the saucer, uh, the, the, uh, the teacup handle. I'm going to fettle that in. I'm going to make all this good, I'm going to fettle all that in and build it up with a bit of bronze resin and just make all this nice and smooth and then we're going to get ready for patina. So tomorrow cannot come soon enough, so we'll see you there.